Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's do an example of projectile motion using vector notation and motion in a two-dimensional plane. So we have an object that's being shot out at some initial velocity at a 45 degree angle. The initial velocity, the magnitude of it, is 200 meters per second and they're asking us to find, first of all, the position vector equation as a function of time, the maximum height obtained, the range obtained by the projectile, and the final velocity when the projectile lands. We found from the previous video that the general equation for the position as a function of time is going to be equal to minus gt squared over 2 plus the initial position in the y direction in the y direction plus the initial velocity times t. So using that equation based upon what we're given here, let's see what we can come up with. Well, first of all, the projectile is fired from the ground, so our initial height will be zero. So that simplifies things, but we're given the initial velocity and we can find the x and y components because we're also given the angle. So let's write it out like this. That means that the position as a function of time is going to be equal to minus one half gt squared in the j direction. And then the initial velocity, that's going to be plus the magnitude times the cosine of the angle, 45 degrees, that would be 200 times the square root of 2 over 2, which is the, the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. That would be in the i direction plus 200 times the square root of 2 over 2 in the j direction. So that gives us the x and the y components of the initial velocity. Combining the x and y components, we can see that the position vector as a function of time is going to be equal to, well, let's see for a moment. I'm forgetting something. I'm forgetting the t here, so I can't forget the t and I need a t there. Otherwise, it doesn't work out. It's velocity times time to get distance. So here we have 1 half gt squared. That's in the j direction. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is write the i direction first. So let's do that. So we have the i direction, which is 200 divided by 2, which is 100 times the square root of 2 in the i direction and then plus minus one-half gt squared plus 100 times the square root of 2 in the j direction. There we go. So now we have the i and the j components of the position vector. Let's see here. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the maximum height. We're trying to find the range. Let's see here. The maximum height. Well, the maximum height can be found by saying that the velocity in the y direction, well, will be zero because it's moving up, reaches the maximum height, velocity in the y direction will be zero, and now it's falling back down again. So what we can do is we can take the derivative of this, yeah, derivative of the position vector to get the, hmm, the velocity in the y direction, the velocity in the x direction. So let's do that. So velocity as a function of time is equal to the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. So let's go ahead and do that. So the derivative, and again, I'm forgetting the t in there. I keep forgetting the t. There's a t there, and there is a, ooh, there's a t there. Board is acting up a little bit. All right, so I can't forget the time of that. So here, the derivative of this will be equal to 100 times the square root of 2 in the i direction. Because when we take the derivative, the t drops out, we simply have the constant in front. Here we have 2 times that, that would be minus gt squared, or minus gt. So we have a plus a minus gt, and then over here we have plus 100 times the square root of 2, and that would be in the j direction. So let's see here, so the derivative of that is 100 times square root of 2, the derivative of this is 2 times 1 half, that's 1 times gt. All right. Now, what we can say is we need to find the time when we reach maximum height. That's when the velocity will be zero when we reach maximum height. So we take um, v t is equal to question mark is equal to zero. In other words, in the x direction or in the y direction. So v in the y direction, we'll set it equal to zero and we're trying to find the time for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the y component here and set it equal to zero. So we have minus gt plus 100 times the square root of 2 
in the j direction and set it equal to zero and solve for t. That means that this must equal t. Moving that the other side, we have gt is equal to 100 times the square root of 2, or t is equal to 100 times the square root of 2 divided by g. Remember, g is equal to 9.8, so this is 100 times the square root of 2 divided by 9.8. So that will give us the time when we reach the maximum height. So we have uh, 100 times the square root of 2 divided by 9.8. Oh, let me do it again. 100 times the square root of 2 times 9.8 divided by 9.8 squared equals, that will be 14.43 seconds. So that will be 14.43 seconds. Since that's how long it takes for us to reach the maximum height, we can then plug that back into the position vector and see where we are at that time. So the position vector r, when time is equal to 14.43, is equal to, we'll give us this right here, that's 100 times the square root of 2 times the time, which is 14.43, plus a minus 1 half gt squared. So it would be 9.8, that's a minus, divided by 2, times 14.43 squared. That would be plus 100 times the square root of 2 times 14.43. Okay, and that would be in the j direction. So this is in the i direction, and this here is in the j direction. All right. So let's see. So this is, gives us the position in the i direction, the x direction, and the y direction when the time is equal to 14.43 seconds. So let's calculate that out. So we have 14.43 times 100 times the square root of 2, and that gives us 2,041 meters. So this would be equal to 2,041 in the i direction. What about the j direction? So that would be that quantity right there, and then we subtract this from it, so that would be minus 14.43 squared times 9.8 divided by 2, close that, equals, that gives us 1,020, so that would be plus 1,020 in the j direction. So that is the position when time is equal to 14.43 seconds, which is the time that we reach the maximum height, which means at that point we reach the height of 1,020 meters and a distance of 2,041 meters. So h max is going to be this quantity right here. h max is equal to 1,020 meters. What about the range? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, the range we got from here to here, that was already 2,041 meters. Then we have to cover the same distance again when the projectile comes back down because it takes just as long for the projectile to go up as it takes for it to come down. And the velocity in the x direction is a constant. So if we travel this far, when we get to the highest place, then we travel this far again to get to the full range. So therefore, the range is going to be equal to 2 times 2,041 meters. So that's going to be equal to 4,082 meters. So that's the range. Now one more thing, the velocity when we get to the final position. So the velocity, well, I go back to my velocity vector and I plug in the full time when we reach the, the farthest point. So when we get to this point, the time at that point will be twice 14.43 meters, which is 28.86, or I should say seconds, right? This is 14.43 seconds. We double that. We get 28.86 seconds when we get to the farthest point. So at that point, I want to calculate my velocity. So my velocity when time is equal to 28.86 seconds is equal to in the x direction, we have a constant velocity of 100 times the square root of 2. And that doesn't change with time, but the y direction, the velocity does change. So we have plus a minus 9.8 
times the time, which is 28.86, plus 100 times the square root of 2. And that would be in the j direction. All right. So here, uh, square root of 2 gives us 1.41, and times 100, that's 141.4 meters per second. So in the x direction, we have 141.4 meters per second. That's in the x direction, plus in the y direction, well, actually, we might get a negative value because I think we're coming on the way down. So here we have that minus 9.8 times 28.86 equals, and sure enough, that would be a minus 141.4 meters per second in the j direction. So this would be the final velocity when time is equal to 28.28 seconds, which means that's velocity when the projectile comes back down and hits the ground. So what we have now is we have the time that it took to get the maximum point from that, we got the maximum height. Then we know it takes twice as long to go to the full distance. So we know we went this far when we reached the maximum height times 2 to get the full range. And finally, we get the velocity equation. We plug in the full time of 28.86 seconds to get back to the ground. And that will give us the velocity both in the x and the y direction. And that's a nice example of how to deal with project projectile motion in two dimensions using vector notation. That's how it's done.